Good evening and welcome to prayer meeting. We are so thankful that you are joining us tonight during this time of supplication and intercession for our church body here at Hartford Baptist for our community and our country and even our world. And so we invite you to engage with us as we make our requests known to God. He truly does long to meet with you. He longs for us to meet with him. And he cares about our needs. He cares about the things that are important to us. He cares about our sorrow, our, our sufferings, our trials, our sickness, our weakness. And he, he longs to give us rest and to give us peace. Let's join together as, as we, we do. We have words on the, the screen that you can sing along with, and we invite you to do that wherever you may be. I, I challenge you to open your mouth and make a joyful noise to the Lord this evening because he has done great things for us. God of highest heaven, occupy my lowly heart. Own it all and reign supreme, conquer every rebel power. Let no vice or sin remain that resists your hope. me, make me yours forevermore. I was blinded by my sin, had no ears to hear your voice, did not know your love within. No taste for heaven's joys. Then your spirit gave me life, opened up on your word to me. Through the gospel of your Son, gave me endless hope and peace. Help me now to live a life that's dependent on your grace. Keep my heart and guard my soul from the evils that I face. You are worthy to be praised with my Every thought and deed, O oh, great God of highest heaven, glorify your name through me. Well, good evening, church family. I am excited to get to sit down with you all this evening and spend some time in prayer together. Thank you, Brother Ryan, for getting us started in worship with just some awesome songs. And uh, I know that the rest is going to be incredible as well to prepare our heart to get ready to intercede to the Lord. And we're going to start this evening uh, a little bit differently than maybe we do. Um, we're going to still get into some scripture and prayer here in a few minutes, but I want to keep you up to date because we've got a couple of pressing um, prayer matters in terms of health for some folks. And I want to make sure that we, we address those and then we get to pray for those together. I especially want to mention um, Dr. Uh, Mal, 
Lay and uh, the Lay family as they go through some of these you know end stages and end days. You all have heard, I'm sure, um, different things. I, I've had several folks ask me about just how he's doing. Uh, he is doing as expected at this point. You know, uh, moving closer and closer to the gates of glory, and he is uh, still able to kind of wake up and rouse a little bit uh, and take some substance, but. Um, you know, that, that will continue to decrease as the days approach. So remember, I mean, just everybody that's, uh, Miss Ellen, Mickey, um, Gloria, all, all those and, and their children and, and the family there. So we want to be praying for them. We also want to remember Miss Betty McGill. She's been moved from Encompass to Extendicare and is receiving treatment for her broken hip there as well. Uh, we've got a couple others. Miss um, uh, Lisa Henson's having some some health issues there. You've seen in your newsletter, and also Miss Amy Hales is uh, having some complications after surgery. So be praying for them. Be lifting them up. We want to just intercede to the Lord for their behalf that He would ask for healing and that they would return back to a full health just as soon as as soon as possible. Also, I want to just take a special moment to say that we want to pray for uh, some good news. Our recent graduates have come through, and we want to just thank God for the incredible achievement that they have seen. And so um, just for all those students from um, Geneva County High School and Geneva High School and those that are uh, in our area that, that are affected uh, through our church, we are proud of, of them, and we want to thank God for the achievement that they've, they've seen as well. So let's enter into a time of prayer, and then we're going to come back to some worship with Brother Ryan in a moment. And then we're going to read a couple of psalms together. Thank you for your earnest prayers. And uh, now I want to share a song with you guys that uh, maybe you haven't heard this song in a long time. Uh, it's one that I remember singing as a 
as a kid growing up in church, I remember it was it was one of those songs that I would I would hear my my granny going around singing. And uh, she didn't have necessarily the greatest singing voice, but she sang it from the heart, and she sang it in in true um, sincerity. And uh, I just remember this song sticking with me. It's a it's one of those great Fanny Crosby songs. It's called "Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross." <laughs> keep me near the cross there a precious fountain free to all a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain and near the cross a trembling soul love and mercy found me there the bright and morning star shed his beams around me and in the cross in the Thank you, Brother Ryan, for leading us in worship. I, I certainly appreciate that song, and uh, I know that it's one that we probably maybe either have not heard in a while, but um, it's so good, and I'm just thankful for that. A uh, couple of things that we're going to pray through today. First, we're going to pray in Psalm 37, and then in a few minutes in Psalm 71. But in Psalm 37, this is a prayer from uh, David for instruction in wisdom. If your little Bible has titles like mine does, it's for instruction in wisdom. But particularly as you begin to read with me in a moment, you'll see that it's for instruction on how to deal with seeing the world around you 
succeed while maybe you feel um, oppressed as as a believer. And I think that that is something that just as in my daily reading, this is my daily reading for today. And uh, as I've been looking through this and going through this with you all and this crazy world we're living in right now, sometimes it can feel like we are very much taking the brunt of this compared to some others. Thankfully, you know, most of us in the, in our town and our city have have been spared a lot of the job loss, but there's still some of that that struggle that's there. So I want to read some of these verses, and I'll skip them one through eleven, and then sixteen through nineteen. But read read this with me on Psalm thirty seven. God's word says, "Do not be agitated by evil doers. Do not envy those who do wrong, for they wither quickly like grass." and wilt like tender green plants. Trust in the Lord, and do what is good. Dwell in the land, and live securely. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desires. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will act, making your righteousness shine like the dawn, your justice like the noonday. Be silent before the Lord, and wait expectantly for Him. Do not be agitated by one who per- prospers in his way, by the person who carries out evil plans. Refrain from anger and give up your rage. Do not be agitated. It only can bring harm. For evildoers will be destroyed, but those who put their hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while and the wicked person will be no more. Though you look for him, he will not be there. But the humble will inherit the land and will enjoy abundant prosperity. Jumping down to verse 16. The little that the righteous person has is better than the abundance of many wicked people. For the arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord supports the righteous. The Lord watches over the blameless all their days, and their inheritance will last forever. They will not be disgraced in times of adversity. They will be satisfied in days of hunger. We are making some hard choices, hard choices as a church, hard choices as a community to maybe not do some things and not enjoy ourselves in some of the way that the rest of the world is right now and in choosing to try to help our our elderly people who are especially susceptible to this virus in making choices in terms of work or maybe um, ease of enjoyment and entertainment and trying to follow the lay of the law of the land the government has given us and the example that they've asked us to set. And that always is hard for me and is a struggle for me because in my gut and in my mind, I think, well, we're supposed to be having church and we're supposed to be doing this and supposed to be doing that. But folks, we are more than anything else trusting of our Savior and trusting of God that He has all of this in His great master plan and that we don't have to micromanage and we don't have to worry and we don't have to try to make a way ourselves, but that He does that. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time in prayer and we're going to ask God to be sovereign as He is and to acknowledge His sovereignty and to acknowledge His authority and to tell him thank you, and to also make sure that we are being faithful to God's word, and not worrying about what other people are doing around us, but being concerned with ourselves and our own righteousness, our own holiness, and our own walks of life, and trusting that God is going to take care of all the details outside of today. So let's enter into that time of prayer.
Afflicted saint, to Christ draw near your Savior's gracious promise here. His faithful word you can believe that as your days your strength shall be. Your faith is weak, your foes are strong, and if the conflict should be long, the Lord will make the tempter flee, that as your days your strength shall be. One, the battle's fierce, but the victory's won. God shall supply all that you need. Yes, as your days, your strength shall be. Should persecution rage and flame, still trust in your Redeemer's name. In fiery trials you shall see that as your days your strength shall be. So sing with joy, afflicted one. The battle's fierce, but the victory's won. God shall supply all that you need. Yes, as your days, your strength shall be. When called to bear your weighty cross or sore affliction, pain or loss or deep distress or poverty, still as your days your strength shall be. Sing with joy, afflicted one. The battle's fierce, but the victory's won. God shall supply all that you need. Yes, as your day, your strength shall be. Amen. Thank you again, Brother Ryan. Well, our last psalm tonight is going to be in Psalm 71. We're going to pick up in verses 17 through 24. So I will read it and then we'll talk a little bit. God, you have taught me from my youth, and I still proclaim your wondrous works. Even while I am old and gray, God, do not abandon me. While I proclaim your power to another generation, your strength to all who are to come. Your righteousness reaches the heights, God, you who have done great things. God, who is like you? You caused me to experience many troubles and misfortunes, but you will revive me again. You will bring me up again, even from the depths of the earth. You will increase my honor and comfort me once again. Therefore, I praise you with a harp for your faithfulness, my God. I will sing to you with a, larp, lyre, with a lyre, holy one of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you because you have redeemed me. 
Lord, my tongue will proclaim your righteousness all day long, for those who intend to harm me will be disgraced and confounded. And this last prayer is a prayer for comfort. Comfort in this moment and comfort in this time that when we do what we are called to do, that we would be protected, but also comforted in who God is. That there is no one like Him. There is no one in the whole world. And because of that, we will praise Him. So the last prayer is a prayer of comfort and of praise to thank God for His comfort in us and to pray His comforting us and for being there, always being there, never moving away, even when we're in times of distress, especially when we're in times of distress. But more than that, expounding on this, saying that we will proclaim His righteousness all day long, even for those who intend to harm us, because they will be disgraced and they will be confounded. And we see that around us too, don't we? We see people who are confused and who don't know what to think. And the news sometimes changes minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. Folks, we have solid, firm footing in God our Father. So we're going we're gonna to thank Him for that. We're going to appreciate and, and honor and recognize the comfort He gives. And lay your head down tonight with a clear conscience and a peaceful state of mind. Let's pray and be dismissed. Thank you.